cheated, robbed, and stolen were the words spoken most outside of the Dome about a critical pass interference fans say was never called. I think it's going to go down as the worst non-call in history. We didn't know the refs were going to be the 12th man for the Rams. In the wide open field, passing the field, oh, Lord, the and ref, they did not throw a flag. They the took ref, it from us. They robbed us the of ref. it. I can't say what I want to say, but Lord Jesus, they took it away from us. Yeah. New York needed to call in and tell them they had to throw a flag on that play. It was too egregious. I sit right there at the very top row. We could see it from there. It was unreal. Everybody saw it. Call the police. We got robbed. Did you see that? Yeah, it was bad. Uh, it hurts. You know, to come here and see that. The only thing I can say is I'm going to pray for those referees. Okay? Thank you. No call. This is and no some call. took it out on the NFL no using call. words like conspiracy. No if we can find an attorney in a city of New Orleans worth his salt or her salt willing to take on the NFL, I'll put my house on the line. The NFL wants the Patriots in Los Angeles. They don't want these small town markets. Roger Goodell does not want the Saints to go back to the Super Bowl. Why, why would he not want them to go back? Because of Bounty Gate. But some talked about their dedication to the Saints and the city and culture they love. Ah, <laughs> ever get the feeling you've been cheated? Good night. We're going to chop, chop. We're going to chop, chop. We're going to chop, chop. Oh, oh yeah. <clears throat> chop, chop. I gotta, oh, yeah. I got to say, guys, I'm impressed with the energy you're bringing to this already. Mm. Well, I, you know, sometimes you just got to put your game face on and go out there and make plays, you know? Yeah. You just got to, you got to, uh, you got to put aside your feelings and you got to just go out there and bring the intensity and... Uh, you know, just go out there and make plays. And get illegally decapitated by a random guy coming up the side. Sometimes life is unfair, <clears throat> according to Mickey Loomis. <laughs> <laughs> I read that, I was like, yeah, makes sense to me. Go ahead, Mickey. I mean, sometimes two refs decide to just wave it off, and then the third ref uh, claims that he didn't see the play, even though he obviously clearly did. Was standing right there. So, you know, refs are cops. Refs are definitely cops. And you know what they say about cops? They're bastards. Oh, yeah. They All do say that, yeah. Are bastards. Even they though say. there was definitive video evidence, uh, they still got away with the, uh, they didn't get the conviction. It was a, a spur of the moment thing. It was a bang bang play, you know. Could, could they, did, he, did he have a gun? Did he not? Uh, you know, so everybody was, uh, they were scared. They didn't know what to do. And, um, they didn't yeah. draw a charge on the, um, P.I. or the helmet to helmet. Nope. And uh, even the perpetrator, in watching the video, um, you can see it in his body language as he's walking away. He's a bit shocked himself. <laughs> he knew he was going in there to be the bad guy, and he's willing to take the fall. Uh, and then he walked away not the bad guy, and just didn't even know what to do with himself. Well, it does make sense because most uh, famous killers in America also have three names, just like this guy. Oh, my God. I didn't even think about that. What are the guy's names anyway? I, I for whatever reason he's got this he's got this uh, unusual three names yeah. that go out of my brain every time I hear them. Um, it's like Roby Coleman. Is but the last name? In what order are they? But like Coleman, Roby, Roby Coleman, Coleman, smoking. And then his name's like Nicholas or Nikolai or Nick. Nicole or something. It's like three interchangeable names. They could be anyone could be in the middle of one or the beginning of the or the end. It's like he wasn't even there. I don't he, think he was. Wasn't, he? Who he was wasn't, that guy? He wasn't there to me because I've never even bothered to look up his name. He's just the guy who committed the PI. Who everybody like he goes in there and he intentionally commits PI, which is fucked up. I understand that people in the NFL do the shit um, to save to quote save touchdowns, which who knows. You know, the, the shit could have easily bounced off of Tommy Lee's hands. We don't know it was going to be a touchdown. Tommy Lee could have took a step and maybe gone out of it. Anything could have happened, right? Yeah. But he did it to, quote, save the touchdown, which doesn't fucking, doesn't seem like it should be in the rules. Nickel? 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 Roby Coleman. Nickel? What the hell is that? Nickel with two L's. Okay. Uh, he says the refs told him the no call was a legal play 
I believe because they thought it was tipped at the line of scrimmage or something, even though it wasn't. Yeah, so there was a point where, I, I remember this now, so Nickel, or whatever his face is, says after the game that he looked up from the ground at one of the refs who said to him that the ball had been tipped. But he, he, he this never... This is new information to me. So what was discovered after that was that the guy never, Nickel's face never went to the ground. Like yeah. he he's not even like a like a, a reliable narrator anyway. Like I don't really know what his thing is. Although he did say, like you said, he admitted that he intended to pi to because he thought he was burned. This, by the right. way, was uh, the signature move of Brandon Browner. Oh yeah, the all pi defense. The all pi guy. Absolutely. And he also admitted that. Like he said that. In fact, uh, when the Saints brought him in, he said one of the things that he sought to teach the younger guys. Was if you're beaten, just grab the guy and pull him to the ground. It makes sense, but Save it's also but also Brandon Browner led the league in fucking penalties when he and was then in the I Saints. think he also got into some legal trouble recently, right? But well, I think the off season is a great off to a great start because Mickey Loomis is already talking about how high Drew Brees' uh, cap hit is going to be for next year. So <laughs> oh my they're god! They're already like softening <clears throat> the ground to like let him go. I don't know. <sighs> Well, the guy is still playing at a top level, so... Is he? He's in the NFC fucking championship game. Yeah. He's not playing at top Drew Brees level. Let, let me rephrase he's playing it. better than fucking Blake Bortles. Uh, let me rephrase what so I'm... about the pick in overtime? No, I'm not, I'm not pissed about that. That was a that. fucking fluke pick. The guy caught it. But it was a fluke fucking pick. Well, also... The guy caught it on his back. Yeah, Drew was hit, like, as he was throwing it. And, in fact, he was hit in the face. Also not called. Also not called. So I'm not really – no, that's not what I'm talking about. I, I, I should rephrase the question. Um, is he is he performing at a high level? Yeah. Uh, he, he had a great season. He had he broke his record for completion percentage. Um, he uh, – I think he had – was it 3,900-something uh, yards? He didn't quite get 4,000. Right. Um, but – uh, he didn't throw hardly any interceptions. I think it was like five interceptions all year or something it like that. It got worse as the year was went on. Slightly. He did. But um, I'm just saying physically it's like he doesn't do the things that he used to do. Like he, Okay, he's still better than most, so you keep him. Also, while we're talking about this, irrelevant to whatever happened in that game, there's a 41-year-old <laughs> motherfucker playing in it. <laughs> and I know he takes some weird drug that we can't really figure 40. out what it is. 40. I thought he was 41. He just turned 40. No, he was, he's talking about Brady. Tom Brady. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Sorry. He, I, he takes a weird drug. It's going to come out later. But what he the be- fuck? He believes in like the power of alkaline water. Yeah, he just shit. he eats water There's for something. every meal. He's um, discovered something that is probably illegal. That will one he day probably be illegal. He probably eats like exactly two almonds for a snack. Just he keeps himself very videos. motivated. Anyways, so yeah, you keep Drew Brees for fuck's sake, yeah. All right, well, let's uh, maybe we should back up a little bit and just Hi, start. we're the hunker down kids. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're like everybody in New Orleans, we're really freaking thrown by this. So, like, yeah, that's Allie sitting across from me at the at, at the rectangular table. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on the oblong side or the long side of the table is uh, Lance Vargas. Yes, Say hello. Indeed. Yes, indeed. And then, hi, I'm Jeff. I'm at the what did we say it was? The ass end of the, the table? ass end of the table, <laughs> yes. Uh, I own a gallery at uh, 901 Charters called the Dirty Boys, and let, maybe let's start there, the day of okay. what we did. Okay. So we all gathered at the. Well, uh, I, think, I think we have to take it back to the NFC, or to the week before. We haven't talked about the Falcons because you weren't there. The Eagles game. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Because I see where you're going. Okay. Go so th- this begins as a story about the corner of Domain and, Char- uh, mm-hmm. and Charters. Like this is where all We're of these things happen. We're going to set our stage there. Okay. Yeah. All right, go go ahead. Well, Lance wasn't there, mm-hmm. um, but uh, many of us gathered to watch the uh, the Saints Eagles game uh, at the corner. We put a uh, TV in the truck bed, and we all put chairs out outside, and we, uh, you know, drank enough beer and bourbon and whatever, and ate uh, enough Popeyes for to stay warm, and. The, the thing was, though, that the TV wasn't getting great reception out there. So at some point, we put um, a ladder, a metal ladder, in the bed of the truck behind the TV and wound the antenna around it to sit it on top so that we could get the antenna as high as possible. 
but it still wasn't working. And so at one point, at the end of the first quarter, Jeremy went over and made an offering to the antenna and put a piece of Popeyes up on the ladder. A spicy thigh. It was a spicy thigh from Popeyes. Safe to assume not the first chicken that has been sacrificed to a god here in the beautiful Crescent City. And after that, uh, not only did the reception come back, but uh, the Saints scored all the points and the Eagles scored none. So It's almost like the cowboy boots. It was a it was a really incredible piece of chicken, and we uh, we reified it uh, as so it deserved. It's hanging <laughs> on the wall in the gallery right now. Yes, after the game, we froze the ladder chicken. Uh, Jeremy epoxied it, and shellacked it, and mounted it uh, into a beautiful piece of art. And boy, didn't we have a hard time in that game! And uh, didn't we have a lot of hard times near the end of the season? Weren't we not the juggernaut that we? Or previously in the season. No, it's like a tale of two seasons to me. Because in the, like, maybe more. But, like, I don't know. The first couple of games, we were terrible. And then we, like, really found our way through. And, like, and then we started really kicking ass and scoring, like, tons and tons of points. And then I feel like the last month or so of the season, it was, like, we were really fighting through it again. Yeah, I mean, there aren't a whole lot of mysteries here as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the, The slow start... Wait, I mean, they lost to Tampa, mm-hmm. okay, and then they couldn't stop anybody and so forth and so on. They lost to Brian Fitzpatrick. <coughs> also, it was and, uh, Tom Benson's funeral that day. Right. Oh. But. That fucking old fucker ruins everything. But my, my theory about all of that is that, uh, you know, the NFL this nowadays, and the Saints are definitely a team that goes by this, uh, you know, MO. Uh Nobody like the first couple of games are treated almost as preseason games. Mm-hmm. They're still getting the roster set. They still don't know what they're doing. There's like people on the team who aren't going to be starters, and a lot of shit still getting moved around. So the first game, the second game, you know, you hope you can win them, but you are, that's not really the team that you are. And that's certainly been the case with the Saints like this year and in the last couple of years. The Patriots treat the first like eight to ten games like that, basically. I mean, really, it seems like it. Yeah. And, uh, and I, know I the, played in the AFC, I probably would do. <laughs> <laughs> and I know the Saints aren't the only ones who do that. Um, and as far as like uh, the part of the season where it kind of seemed like it tapered off toward the end, um, that's really not a mystery to me either. I Like, uh, you know... Teron Armstead got hurt. Teron Armstead, like, his arm well, fell off. Um, they, they put it back on. They've put it back on before. Yeah. Um, it's never as strong every time they put it back on, but it has come off before. And then Ramchick's got a bad shoulder, and Pete broke his hand, and Walford's and got some problem with his back. fucking game. Right. Which he shouldn't even have been in. I was screaming that the whole time during that game. Why are they still in there? Why is he still in there? Oh, that's probably why we lost. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they put some starters in during that Carolina game. Sean being a fucking arrogant asshole. Well, uh, the thing with that is uh, Peyton complained about this, actually. He said that the roster isn't big enough like to keep all the players safe, is in his words. Um, but really, he Fake means... Fake some injuries. Yeah, that's probably what they could have done. Okay, so, but anyway, anyway but we then, were always... We were never the juggernaut again after that. And um, I think in the final game, we we're going to talk about the call a lot, but... Offense was a little better. Defense was a little better. We won the fucking game. Also, we had three chances after the fucking uh, penalty to win, and we didn't. Yeah. And, and the dude hit a 58 fucking yarder. And fuck that guy. Because <laughs> I was all ready for him to fucking miss it, and then when he kicks the motherfucker, it doesn't look like it's going in. He put a fucking button hook on that thing or something because it wound back into it. I think that was the one to to, to, to put yeah. it into overtime. Yeah, so yeah, but that one I really liked because <laughs> it wasn't like a please miss it and then we'll have a chance to win. It was like miss this bitch and we're done. And it seemed like it well, he was about to miss it. Mm-hmm. And then he didn't and then we went out there and didn't do anything and then we didn't stop them. So it doesn't all come down to the call. Although, it does though, because if it had been a different call then we would have had a fresh set of downs with a minute 45 left, and we would have won the game. Yeah. And you, you can take it back all the way to all the butterfly effects out there. That's not what I'm doing. I'm saying that call 
with a minute. Well, you don't know that Tommy Lee would have caught the motherfucker. It doesn't matter. It was P.I. Right. I mean, if, if they give you the call on that play, that's they, the game. If they called P.I., we would have won. Right. And you can do this, and you really can drive yourself crazy going back and go, well, you know. If they, they would have gotten the ball with how much left? So we so run the if, ball down to absolute zero? Or to with them, not a lot of time left? If Tommy Lee catches that ball, um, they, I mean, if he doesn't catch the ball, if, if they call they a pass interference, the they have a whole fresh set of downs. And they can run it a couple times. They can kneel it a couple times. That takes the thing well within, like, inside of 30 seconds or something. That They get the ball back. Probably. Okay, well, if, they, if, you kick, I, if they end up kicking a field goal. Yeah, I mean, could have tried could have, you, who knows what it happened. I did read that they, in the first game, right before the half, they ran down the field and scored a field goal in, like, 27 seconds. Mm-hmm. So lots of things could have happened. The call sucked. Trust me. The call is right there with me in what, what I'm starting to figure out is, like, this quadrant now of heartbreaks for us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it goes beast quake, and I hate that I have to use that phrase. Mm-hmm. Vernon Davis. Let's just call it the Lynch run. Okay. Fuck a beast quake. Because also when those when they say that things cause earthquakes in stadiums, it's because they have the little fucking Seismograph. what's it called the seismograph. seismograph. Yeah, they have the one there. Mm. Plenty of fucking crowds have caused earthquakes. They just don't have a seismograph. Yeah, I mean, there's a famous LSU Auburn game that. Yeah, they yeah. had one there too, which is why they have one in Louisiana. Right. I don't fucking know the New Madrid fault line. Who fucking cares? <laughs> but so they got that, the Davis touchdown, the other play that I'm not going to call by what they call it the uh, we'll call it the Diggs TD. Sure. And now this one. Yeah. So it, now we have a suffering of the Saints type fucking thing happening where this is too much. This is a, this is. I don't know too many other teams that have had all their hopes and dreams dashed in such spectacular fucking fashion. Yeah, it's it's become a real, uh, you know, it's there's legends, right? There's like a whole, um, there's a mythology that's developing that is kind of compelling. Um, it's almost like the futility of the Falcon, Falcons, except they never deserve to be there, but somehow always sort of found themselves in the conversation whereas we totally deserve to be there yet always find ourselves on the outside looking in well there's flukes that happen yeah, I mean there's like divine I would say the seeming. outside of outside of the Vernon Davis play which is the which hurts me more than the the Marshawn play but outside of the Vernon Davis play I would say that the the other three are flukes like even the Marshawn play is a fluke but it doesn't hurt my feelings was that as pivotal a uh, a touchdown, like it ended the game. No, we were not going to go far in the playoffs that year. No, but, but Allie's asking if if that actually ended the game. The like the Minneapolis one and the and this one were like like changed the result of the right. contest, right? Indisputably, right? Um, we were and like I don't remember the that one. I mean, I remember the play, but like I don't remember it ha- like ending the game. It wasn't yeah. like a walk off home run for them. Right? No, it really wasn't. It was but it was it was kind of like the exclamation point on a thing that had already kind of happened. I, mean, I, I think re- you're right. I remember it as they were kind of kicking our ass. No, yeah. Well, no, we were in it. We were on our way back and we needed to stop them and come down the field and score and we would have either tied it or won it. So there were there was a series of things that needed to happen. So, but so when our defense went out there and our defense, this was the uh, Greg Williams defense, and we had confidence in them. They were good. Um, they went out there to try and stop them. He ran through almost every one of them. Right. Like, I, and he, I remember the play. So he, and then the game was basically unreachable. So it's not that um, the mechanics of it aren't the same as much as the poetry of it. Is that each one of our guys who had done who had put so much heroics in the year before um, got stuffed and run over? Um, I remember Tracy Porter in particular probably got the nastiest uh, stiff arm mm-hmm. in that. So here you have a guy who is our hero the, the year before who saves us twice. Twice, just yes. thank you. The guy just takes him, just, he's not a big guy, I mean, Lynch is huge, pushes him, and he just flies back with one hand, and then he goes and runs down into the end zone, 
um, grabs his fucking crotch on the way into it. And if you notice on the replays, they always make sure that that's not in there. So he kind of fucked himself on that, you know. Um, and then you know our our our, our season's over on that on that yeah. type of play. You know? so, so the context is different, it was and I brutal. think brutal. I think the reason why it doesn't hurt as much as you know this year's does anyway, or, or a lot of the other ones, frankly, is the context is different. The context of that season was you, this was the Saints team who had just won the Super Bowl, had done the impossible thing in one football. Like, we were no longer worried about anything. There were, we didn't have any grievances. There was nothing, there, was no, there were no problems anymore. Um, and you had a team who, tired as fuck from all of that, somehow survived the whole season being the Super Bowl champion, where A, you're tired as fuck, B, everybody's trying to beat your ass, See, you know, somehow backs into the playoffs, ends up in this weird ass situation where they're playing the the team who who I think the Seahawks had a losing record in making the, the only playoffs. Only seven and nine yeah. team to ever make the playoffs. So and they're playing them in Seattle, even though I believe we had an eleven and five record. Yeah. they had a seven and nine record. So there's no reason why we there should be a rule a far of rule applied there right maybe like it doesn't matter like just because you win your division doesn't mean you should get automatic home right. field advantage over another team that's a wild card that should be a fucking rule everybody right. agrees with that but anyways we have to go up there and do it <laughs> I don't and know if everybody agrees the with thing that. about the lynch run also is is that they play it all the fucking time like you see that play a lot, and I'm sure maybe the Diggs TV over time will, you know, be seen maybe more. But then that was in a losing effort, and that Lynch run was really the launch of that idiotic, imbecilic, stupid ass, fucking Seattle team that I hated so fucking much too. So got a lot of fucking pain in my heart for the Lynch. Run. Okay, yeah, I can see that. And they um, called it that stupid name. But the reason I keep coming back to the historical context for the Saints, or at least for just from the Saints' perspective, is that it there wasn't as much at stake. We had won a Super Bowl. It would have been cool as fuck if we had gone and won another one after that. But you could already see at that point in the season, the writing was kind of on the wall for the Saints. They were beat up. They were tired. Um, you would like to have beaten that team and not gotten embarrassed in that way. It was very embarrassing because they but, were a 7-9 nine, nine right. team. Mm-hmm. And we but also... Super Bowl champions. But also it was like, okay, now everybody can go take a nap and we'll come back next year and we've got plenty of time left. Well, well yeah. As the, now we don't have plenty of time. Now left. there is no longer plenty of time. Well, and, we didn't know that there would be seven, three, seven, and nine seasons and a bounty gate. So let's move on with our suffering. Um, the next year we come out and we get Darren Sproles and um, we got the basically the same Super Bowl team, but we had a couple... Weapons on offense. Jimmy Graham's fucking kicking ass. Offense that set all the records. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a team that could have won a Super Bowl. Now, now we're now we're feeling good about ourselves. Mm-hmm. Now we're feeling as good about ourselves as we did the year we won the Super Bowl and this year. This is a special fucking season. We kick all kinds of ass. We win our. Uh, there our first playoff game this no. year. No, no, that was the. We were, uh, that there was, was two teams better than us that year. San Francisco and... The Packers. And so what happened was the Saints beat the Lions in the wild card game, oh, right, and then right, they had right. to go to San Francisco, and then the disaster struck. Where And that was a game that they thought they had. Um, they you know they were in trouble, and then they came back, and... We were putting was, our magic on them. And then it came down to the... It got wacky at the end. Sproles, our two new yeah. weapons on offense, both saved us. Right. Sproles and Graham... And they did the exact same thing. Well, they they let Alex Smith run a fucking 30-yard. Um, and I also remember Greg Williams kind of fucking that up. Well, Greg Williams is the guy is he yeah, wasn't covering the play on the prevent. Right. Well, it wasn't a prevent. No, he blitzed everybody when he didn't have to. Right. And that's what ended up with uh, Roman Harper on Vernon Davis at the end. And that's kind of what everybody's still pissed at Greg Williams for. In addition to the fact that Greg Williams, you know, got everybody in trouble. Um, right. That's coming. Yeah, but that so but Bounty Gate happens immediately after that, like well, immediately how, after how, that, after that that was the locker room speech, the Greg Williams locker room speech that got recorded by that guy that day. 
Yeah, yeah. It was. That's, mm-hmm. that was that day. So now we got some real suffering happening. Because mm-hmm. the, so the Vernon Davis TD uh, was just because we thought we were going to win. Mm-hmm. So historical context-wise, we are just a team that lost in the divisional round of the playoffs. We weren't trying to defend a Super Bowl. Well, we lost to a team that was seated higher than us. Not such a not, not such a bad thing. I don't I don't think just people... taking the lead back in that game in a four play drive with a successful two point conversion. So yeah. like, it was like right near the end of the game. It seemed like we, God was going for us. Yeah. And we had like successfully done that and then they got the ball back and they and they did that whole they drove all the way down the field. Yeah, and I'm also Twice gonna and I'm also gonna disagree with you about the context. I think that people really felt like that was a team that was gonna win the Super Bowl if they had gotten out of that game alive. Because yeah, it, I, I do believe that. I don't believe that about last year's team necessarily. Possibly could have, but I'm not confident. But I'm pretty sure that they that they would have beaten every other team. Yeah. In the league, also uh, just as a little accent, a little sprinkling on top, there was a Harbaugh there, the bad Harbaugh <laughs> too. They're both bad Harbaughs. Yeah, but one of them's worse. Yeah, you're right. You want the John. <laughs> You don't want khaki facial expression, dude. Oh, I hate that guy. Are you kidding okay, me? Okay, yeah, that guy I'm on sucks. record as a uh, Harbaugh, Harbaugh hater. Yeah. Okay, so I like the way this is going. We're establishing grievance. This is good for me. Um, <laughs> and it goes on. No, and it does go on because then immediately after that we get Bounty Gate. Till the head and the body will die. And then and and then there are like the couple years of trying to recover from the Bounty Gate. And usually, I mean, I think that it is really one in a million that the that the Peyton Breeze Loomis regime remained intact long enough after Bounty Gate to actually come back to where they have been in the last couple of years. Yeah. That I mean it's just like that wasn't supposed to happen and it yeah, did. The three seven no, and nine that seasons. That was not part of it. Roger's master plan. No. And and so but the difference between pre Bounty Bounty Gate and post Bounty Gate is that now it's really like, what was that movie with all the old man heroes that came? Cocoon. Back? No. <laughs> you know. The, um, um, Space Cowboys. No. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, there's Pause. a lot of them. Shit, the, Stallone was in it, and uh, oh, the Expendables. The Expendables. Yeah, yeah. So that's what's going on now, right? So you have like this. We hammered like, out some pretty good old guy movies, though. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um. But you see where I'm going at? Like this is it. This this is like uh, do or die for these people. Yeah, but in the last two years, and, I mean, Drew and so broke like every fucking record this year. I mean, it was like it was it was almost like the storyline was like too good. Right, right. It, it was, but also it's like revenge for all the grievance, and yeah. and there's like grievance upon grievance. There are these things that happened to them that we just described, mm-hmm. and then there's Bounty Gate, and then there's also like the lingering chip on everybody's shoulder because. Because it's New Orleans and because it's the whatever the national media has against the Saints, it's a combination of things. It's like well, it's the small market, but it's also it's also I think that the national press hates Sean Payton, and I think that they have a go with that. And I think that they have a thing against there's they never gave Breeze's due because of you know whatever. Um, I think there's a lot of people who think that we're like a dirty program or whatever because of Bounty Gate. Like right. they never, like they totally bought into the frame that the Shield established about that whole fucking incident. Right, and that and, everybody has been doing that since the beginning of football, and we got exemplified as a result <laughs> of it. Although Greg Williams fucking was probably the depending on how you look at it, right guy at the right time for that or the wrong guy at the wrong time for that. But he was the perfect fucking guy to exemplify. Yeah, but and instead, also, I mean, f- fuck that guy. Right, you that know? guy was terrible. <laughs> and he was... But he was... Yeah, it was he was a perfect target, right? Yeah, yes. he was easily... He was a mark yeah. for, for Goodell at them. Yeah. So then we go, we have four head coaches in a short amount of time. Defensive one coordinators. Of whom, uh, no. Oh, head coaches, you mean? Uh, one of them's named... Uh, Joe Vitt. <laughs> yeah, that was the better... One of the better ones. There was a worser one than him. Uh, um, a offensive line. Aaron, Aaron, Cromer? Aaron Cromer. Yes. Yes. Uh, then Joe Vitt, and then we got um, Peyton back. So three head coaches in a short amount of time. And we had no general manager that year. And we did manage to pull off a 7-9 and nine fucking season. 
Then we come back, and then there's Sean's going to get him here. Um, and then we make it uh, to the playoffs and lose to the, the fucking Seahawks again. Asshole Seahawks. But let me point out that on the way to losing to the Seahawks, they pulled off that uh, upset of Philadelphia in the cold um, in the game that was also won by Popeyes. Mm. Wait, what did Popeyes have to do with that? You don't remember the Popeyes at the end of that season? No. The team ate up Popeyes. It was the same year as oh. the Beefy Mac year. Was it? No. It was, the, it was the season of magical food. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, so uh, you may not remember this, but towards the end of the 2013 season, the oh, Rob right. Ryan I year, do. it's coming back. Yeah. <laughs> Peyton took the Popeyes away from the team, and then they started fucking up, and then he brought the Popeyes back, and then they won <laughs> some games. So all of New Orleans went crazy for Popeyes, and like I more than so. usual. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I specifically remember sitting in Harry's. Like it's not like suddenly. <laughs> Watching the Eagles game with Popeyes. So this is twice. Do you know when you fry chicken, it's fucking delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my god! So I just and there's I, spicy seasoning. I, we got to get this place. <laughs> Let's go right now. You want some? Yeah. Yeah, always. <laughs> I just wanted to get it in there and let it be known that twice the Philadelphia Eagles have been defeated in the playoffs by Popeyes. Okay, that's a good point. But I also want to. I think. The other factor that we're overlooking times, was really. when Sean came back, it was also midlife crisis, Sean. This was Sean... Go- Destroyed his get- marriage, Sean, lost his Sean house. Sean getting divorced, <laughs> moving back from Dallas or whatever. Uh, dancing his- in the Bahamas. Yes, dancing with uh, skanky ladies, um, getting extremely buff and wearing awful like crossfit showing yeah shirts and stuff yeah uh probably doing some pills <laughs> um <laughs> if you believe the rumors which i do yes yeah i mean because after bounty Gate, we still had like we had pills we had movie tax credits we had like lots of other um like really scammy shit going on tom and his uh family oh yeah the benson Seriously. family drama <laughs> not getting along a fight in the press box um yeah, a shaking of a bitch. Su- Rita shook a bitch. Succession, the red wine pills and ice cream story. <laughs> like it's just like, so. There's a lot of things a lot going of things on. Happening. And I, I just meant like if we're talking about like Sean's revenge tour, it was also Sean's midlife crisis, and I think we need to remember that. Absolutely, it's all a, part about the suffering. This is I like how he's set, I think he's settled down now. You know, he's like he's calmed down a little bit. He's got his Troop sweatshirt, which had a lot of magic for him this season. <laughs> it did. It did. I even saw some people wearing it around. So oh, wow. I, obviously, it's a big seller. Oh, man. Then we come out and we lose the first two games of last season. And we're like, oh, well, this is just us now. This is just how it's going to be. Um, it's like kind of like the, the prelude to the uh, Super Bowl season where we had two one of them was an 8-8 eight eight season, but we'll just call it a 7-9 season <laughs> because that's the term that we're used to. I don't know why they wanted to show off and win an extra game that season, but it was those Saints. Um, and then for whatever reason, we win like a buttload of games straight. And it's fucking crazy, and we have a chance to go. We're not supposed to beat Minnesota. We inexplicably come back in the second half and do. Oh, we except supposed we don't. to meet beat Minnesota. No, they mm. were they were favored. They were yeah. favored in that game, yeah. Um but Oh, you're right, you're right. I think we if had we won that game, we definitely could have beat Philadelphia. I believe that. That's what a lot of people think. Yeah. Um and Well, cuz they were Minnesota was supposed to win so that they could uh play the Super Bowl in their big dumb bird killing stadium. Right. And uh instead they lost to Philly. I that's, remember now. That's that's what happened. Sorry. Um I think the other thing um that's uh the other like dynamic from last year in particular the thing that started all this is that starting with last season you had dueling boycotts of the NFL in general <laughs> you had uh, people boycotting because of the obvious collusion over the hiring of uh, or non-hiring of Colin Kaepernick and like his ongoing like fight with the NFL mm-hmm. and like the just obvious bullshit dealing with him and Eric Reed and other people who were kneeling. And then you had the MAGA chuds also boycotting the NFL because some people were kneeling. <laughs> so, like, starting last year, I think you have this, like, weird dynamic of, like, 
the NFL becomes just a lot more of a like a political topic than it has been. A Vince McMahon inserts himself in there by creating the XFL. Well, I'm sorry, recreating the XFL, said to be politics free. <laughs> <laughs> Which is which is in itself ridiculous. in right. itself a kind of politics, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's totally. White yeah. supremacist politics. <laughs> right. Um, uh, and also during all that, uh, for whatever reason, a Wow Cafe and Wingery became the um, focal point locally for that. Yeah. And they said they weren't going to play any it's Saints Saint games, Bernard. and then the Saints continued to fucking just kick ass, and I'm sure they were playing them. I, I've mm-hmm. never really got the update on that, but. Well, I don't want to get too far afield here. I think that we. I'm glad we. Well, we'll fast forward. So the Diggs play happens. That's a fluke. Sean Payton dance was going strong. We watched Everybody it at the gallery. Everybody was there. We watched yeah. it at the gallery. We ate the magical king cake that helped us come back from it, the in the second it's half. It's always magic food. Everybody felt as though we were going to kick ass this year. Um, Tom Benson, we laid him to rest in the middle of the field during the Tampa Bay halftime. Yeah, we scattered um, his ashes into the field turf. And then we just kicked ass and ass and ass, and um, we basically were invulnerable most of the year. Even the games we lost, other than the Tampa Bay game, the Dallas game we were in it the whole time, and the Carolina game we weren't playing. Um, Philadelphia really did. I mean, they played us fucking hard. We lost Sheldon. Think about mm-hmm. that now. Maybe Sheldon Rankins is in that game. Maybe golf gets a little pressure on him. I think, think golf gets sacked. I think one time. I think Cam Only got him once. one time. Yeah, it was it was a little bit surprising that they didn't have as much pressure on golf, given the noise and all the other problems. The noise was fucking beautiful, <laughs> and the fact that the Rams could love the noise. It was so loud. In he there. he was rattled. He was he was doing all <clears throat> the all the little signs. He was putting his hands to his helmet and uh, shaking and like going, I don't know, I can't hear. And everyone's like, I can't hear. And I was like, We're gonna kick these motherfuckers' ass. <laughs> And I was drinking and drinking and drinking. And also yeah. I had woken up in Austin and flown to fucking Nashville. And then flown to New Orleans. Okay, so back up a second. So the, the, the day of the NFC Championship, while we are all assembled in the gallery for a second time in, the, in, in as many weeks. Uh, with the spicy thigh. Again, with the spicy thigh. Um, inside, all, wearing, all wearing almost exactly what we wore the previous week. Inside this time because it's too goddamn cold. So we're not out in the street. You have been traveling the country. I have been making a short tour of musical cities of the South. You started in Austin. Started in Austin. Flew to Nashville. Flew to Nashville and then flew into New Orleans and sat on the tarmac for 15 minutes while the game was about to start. Oh, my God. They're like, looks as though we can't get in to gate B9 right now. We're just going to wait for them to pull out and then we'll scoot on in there. And I'm just like... I'm in my Saints gear, and I've been hyping up every airport and the plane <laughs> the entire fucking hype. time. Like, oh, yeah, 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 who that, y'all, who that? And everyone's like, yeah, go. And like, in all the airports, everyone's pulling for us. Well, that's good. We had Y'all the are pulling. Yeah, there's no Rams gear, obviously. Nobody around wearing Rams shit. I no. Mean, everybody there wants us. There Rams fans. There's no Rams fans, which is actually one of God's tender mercies about this whole fucking thing. That's true. Is that we don't have to put up with any team's. Oh. Good point. Shitty fan base. It, it could be worse. Well, you know, sometimes you are the shitty fan base. Fuck if you, right if you look around after base. a game and there's no <laughs> fan base being shitty, it's probably because you are the shitty fan base. But we should probably get into that, actually. Oh, man. Uh, Let's throw some batteries at some refs. <laughs> that's, I mean, God. I mean, look, first of all, the call was terrible, and I think that Ali and I at least agree that it was the deciding factor in the game. Mm-hmm. And it's like all the other things that you can say about it. Like, No, we had three chances to win. Afterwards. Okay, so but all the other things you can say about it, like, you know, they could have done this, they could have done that, could have done other things. Like, the Rams won the game, and there are a lot of things that the Rams could have done differently. Like, the Rams could have won, could have scored more points or did some other thing. But at the point of the game where it was fucking decided right there, like, if that happens differently, we win the game. We win the game. So, fuck that shit. That's like... Don't call a passing play at all was my fucking... I'm, the I'm part of that thing. The, the play was fine. I thought the play call was fine uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, it was third down by that point anyway. But more importantly, th- it was a great play call. It busted their defense. Like, uh, Nickel Face, he said after the game that, like, uh, the only reason that he came over and made that hit on Tommy Lee was because because the the defense was busted. They had no—he wasn't—he had Kamara. Like, he had a different guy. He had to run over there and, like, 
panic. That's we hit, we beat them. That was the, that should have won the game for them. Anyway, again, going too far into it. What's up, Ari? Good. Okay, so, so we won the game. Let's 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 go with that. Why did the refs not call it? Well, okay, so now now comes now come now the now comes the fun part. The the <laughs> ten thousand conspiracy theories and the fucking people going off the goddamn deep end. And yeah. I, 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 I my friend who was at the game says he'll go to his grave thinking it was fixed. Like I don't know, man. I don't know how you can look at something that obvious and it was like, obvious. And miss it. Well the, there are a couple of curiosities. Um one of them, and I think the thing that is the most curious to me is the head referee. What's his name? Voinovich. Voinovich. So is that the guy who, when Sean, you can tell I've watched this several times, when Sean is running to- down the um, that he debos him and says, "Stop, get back." Is that Vinovich? I, that's a good question. I because that guy was the one running shit. <laughs> I don't know. Who he was, or if he was Vinovich, or how the refs are sorted out. If that is that him, guy was running shit. If that is him, then that really does give lie to what is what I'm about to say is that after the game, he said he had not seen the fucking play in exactly. question. Okay, so that guy did see the play. That guy saw they the play. They all saw the play. They pl- replayed it up on the video boards like 15 times. Right. Like, of course you saw the fucking play. There's no way on earth the dude had not seen the, the play. It's referees. a fucking bullshit thing to say. It's bullshit. They're um, not playing in like Notre Dame Stadium. They saw the fucking play. So, so okay. If we if if you're doing your conspiracy theory, well, you know that's a check in the conspiracy theory direction because like why is he that full of shit about it? Yeah, that is, that is the one question that requires an answer and has thus far not. There's not one been given, nor a reason. You know. Yeah. Like okay, so then now it's on to us. Well, okay. So let's say they're throwing, not throwing the game, but being influenced by other factors. The refs. Why? I don't. Fuck the Saints. I don't think there is a good explanation for it. I mean, the people say, "Well, you know, well the 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 league wants L. A. in the Super Bowl." But that, like, I, I can see that. But we just yeah, they're building a five billion dollar stadium. They're trying very hard to make football in L. A. be a thing again, and they. Uh, you know, are having a tough time at, with it. But they don't have any fans. Right. There's no fans out of this like, team. But, like, if you're trying to cultivate some fans, putting the team in the damn Super Bowl is a pretty uh, good way to do it. I guess. But uh, there would also have to need to be a pattern that showed that they had done that throughout the season as well. Even even throughout this game. I, I didn't really notice a whole lot of fuck. I mean, there were there were a couple the of bad calls. Um, did... The call, the missed call against Littleton that knocked uh, Josh Hill out of the game in the first quarter. Okay, that was one. Yeah. Uh, there was also uh, another PI against Michael Thomas uh, early mm-hmm. in the fourth quarter, and then there I think was... That was also by Littleton, who should have been out of the game. By that <laughs> and then there was the hit on Breeze on the interception, which I think could have been a, a roughing the passer. But and the Chargers know. had an inexplicably good season this year too, out of nowhere. Like right. I know that, that also was, nobody cared about. Right, nobody like nobody they cares. were an LA team. Yeah. I think it's much more likely that like they just fucking missed it. They just are like Well that that doesn't they're, make they're it. Just, they may they were just bad. In the in a moment where they needed to not be bad, they just were bad at their job. Well then there's nothing to really be that furious about. A person made a mistake. Well there's I, I think I I hear what you're saying, but I don't agree because I think that like you do need to be able to hold referees accountable in some way. Like, so I then who would want to be a fucking referee? I immediately thought though of the um, so the Detroit Tigers pitcher. It, this is like ten years ago. Armando Galarraga was throwing a perfect game in um, yeah, like ten years ago. He was throwing a perfect game until the very last out of the game, and he. Threw the pitch, the batter hit it, they fielded it, threw it to first base, and the ump ruled him safe. Even though a replay clearly showed that he was out. Yeah, I remember this. I a perfect game. Yeah. A perfect game. And I remember that. Of which there have only been maybe like two dozen ever, like or less. And the umpire blew the call, and this was before replay in baseball, so they had no way of changing it. And even like the rep the the umpire knew 
that he had blown, like, as soon as he looked at it after the game, he was like, I blew the call. And, like, they had this whole, like, healing moment where they, like, he apologized and they had to, like, you know, they, it was, like, praised for all the sportsmanship stuff. Um, there was some kind of thing where they, like, gave him a car or something. I mean, it was really I remember that, up. yeah. Um, but they couldn't change the game. They couldn't change the result, like, because he threw a perfect game. But well, it just wasn't called that way. And I feel that way about this. It's like, that guy, Jim Joyce, is still an umpire in baseball. He's still umping games. And, like, he fucked up in, like, such a huge way. Well, I think that coming out and admitting it immediately is helpful. Um, yeah. I mean, if these refs had done that, it would have uh, assuaged some people. Right. We haven't heard from them. In fact, in fact that is, they're, they're not required right. to talk to us. Right? right. Right. They aren't. And then there's this other thing that, that, uh, that happened on Monday. Uh, a story came out of the Toronto Star, of all fucking outlets, about uh, the referees having to be evacuated from their hotel downtown after yeah. the game. <laughs> that was awesome. Because they were getting threats and stuff. Well, okay. I mean, I, well, I'm sure that's possible. Did it say it was because of threats? Yes. Or well, just because I, I had read a, an abundance of caution. Right. Okay. So that's what they. that was what they said uh they said an abundance of caution, but they said in case anything happens. It was really kind of nebulous, right? But that, I mean, something like that is immediately putting, it's putting the onus back on us. It's not taking any responsibility for it. It's like saying immediately, oh, these fucking crazy people are going to be out to get us. And look at what they made us do. Well, I would believe that it was just they made a bad call and everything if all the other factors hadn't. You have to consider that the guy said, "I went in there to pi." Mm-hmm. Like he knew he did a blatant pi, and there was another penalty in there. There was a helmet to helmet in there also. So to say, "Oh well, he tipped the ball." That's a that's a fucking grassy knoll almost type shit right there. Yeah, like, nobody knows if a man said that there was a tipped ball. I mean, that was one guy saying that. And it just seems, and this is coming from someone who thinks we still lost the thing honestly, because whatever, you get a bad call, you have to still come out there and win. Um, but that was, but to, to say that that was a, anything more than a blatant bad call, and then what the fuck did happen? Like, mm. they, they, it was, it, it couldn't have been more obvious. It wasn't a little tug. It wasn't like, oh, well, he could, he almost didn't see it. I mean, he fucking tackled the guy. It was the worst P.I. I've ever seen called or uncalled. Like, it was like he flat out tackled him way before the ball got there. Fuck Tommy Lee up. Yeah, I mean, Tommy it's, got hit in the air, and then he hit the ground fucking hard. I mean, I don't think any of us thinks that it was, you know, a good call. <laughs> um, or, no, let's but, just, no, it's here, whether it was a missed call or something else. Right, okay, so... Yeah, it's about how blatant was it. So, so let's let's talk about this a little bit because I I personally think that the most likely thing is that they just fucked up because I referees are humans and they're bad at things. But what they've also done after the fact is told several different lies and evasions about it. Like you know, there's this whole thing about the ball maybe having been tipped, which is like bullshit. There's a the guy saying he didn't see the play, which is bullshit. There's this other story about them having to be evacuated from their hotel, which I think is just PR. Um, so, but there's a lot of things, right? And they, and they don't come out and apologize. They don't say anything. They don't. I mean, it's it's if they had just come out and said, "Oh, we blew the call," that's you know, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Oh, I think but a lot of people have been showing that on the phone. Well, okay, yeah, well, that did happen. The league office happen? told Sean Payton, you know, we blew the call. That's fucking ridiculous. Um, okay. So, well, let's say that in they a way, like two minutes after the game ended, because mm-hmm. like Sean was talking to them like immediately. Yeah, so that's interesting too. So, how is it that that happens? But but then also in the in the aftermath, we get all these other different stories about it and like stops and starts. Mm-hmm. It's just well, it's poorly handled. Going back to the call, let's say so these guys have to make a little bit of a judgment call and they have to do it instantly. So you, you think about all the other things, the conspiracy theories that we've talked about, about not liking the Saints, about wanting to uh, elevate L.A. and such. And then you, you get into the human mind and you think about um, things that factor into 
a split second decision, a, almost a fight or flight type thing where you have to make a decision right there at that moment. Yeah, refs are cops. It, yeah, it's not something also that is, hap- is yeah. happening out on the street where no one's watching. There's a whole group of people in this room, and then there's a whole bunch more outside watching. So maybe they did something, um, you know, from their reptile brain, and then very shortly after, their monkey brain kind of caught up to that. They didn't know what to do, and now they're just wanting, like I said. Yes, well, okay. They, they're just wanting to be excused from the whole fucking thing, and they want it all to go away real Right. Quick. So... That I rest our cops. A, um, that's you've probably accurately described a lot of what's going on. There's a lot of things in their head that they don't really know how they're going to react when the thing happens. You know, one of them might even be, you know, it's the playoffs, you got to let them play. Maybe better not to throw the flag, uh, that kind of a thing. The Vinovich um, petition that had circulated before. Mm-hmm. Right, so the Rams yeah, fans I were. I want to make sure everyone knows that I'm not cheating for the Rams. Right. So I'm going to let this one go. Yeah. So there's a lot of things. Which is a poor, poor fucking decision in my eyes, you know what I mean? Right. So, but, okay. Cops also are expected to, like, be trained to handle this particular situation. Like, we hold them accountable when, well, we, we want to hold them accountable when they fuck up. <laughs> we, the, there's a huge, <laughs> right. There is this huge uh, problem. Like, I mean, we identify it as a problem or a fatal flaw in the justice system that we don't hold cops accountable when they fuck up. But we do say that they're expected to be trained to handle that kind of situation. You can say the same thing about referees. I mean, it's their goddamn job to be there and to, like, know, okay, when the big play comes in the big game and all of the, I, I should be... I should be a professional and know how to handle whatever the steps are they, they need to have being trained in to handle that situation. They need to do it. And if they don't do it, then there need to be consequences, and they need to be themselves accountable for it. So and none of that seems to be happening. What you're saying is... Also, PI should be reviewable on replay. There, oh. There's no difference between Bill Vinovich, NFL official with who knows how much fucking experience who's been uh, trusted with this position in the biggest game of the you know year, and Joe Bob's cousin who just joined the force in Okaloosa County. It's like, yeah, refs are cops, but cops have no fucking training, and they're both mostly just fucking yahoos out there who join the fucking shit to kick people's ass. And these guys are, are, are elite. They're supposed to be entrusted they they have to fucking go through all kinds of training and they have to have, have so much experience i mean that's so a good too can't far fuck up with, with considering the amount of experience and training and the abilities that they must have just to get the fucking job there's no fucking explanation for why they would blow <laughs> such a blatant fucking call i like that your standard for like what the referee should be expected to be uh you know his level of professionalism is should be higher than what we should expect of the police that's that's funny. Yeah, well, uh, but I mean, that's America. That's <laughs> life. That's that's the universe. Okay, you know, but um, well, cops get their job. Take a lot of cops take their jobs to to beat the shit out of people. That's what they want to go do. Hey, I get there it. No refs. Like I can't wait to get this fucking job so I can fuck over a team in the NFC Championship. Mm-hmm. That doesn't. They, those guys are trying to hold themselves to some fucking standard. Whereas most cops fucking I don't think are. Or, um, no, I'm sorry, cops out there. There's no cops. Some cops. <laughs> Some cops. Okay. No. Huh. So, I mean, to say that, like, yes, I agree that both uh, jobs have to make split-second decisions, but one is at an elite level. Whereas, and the referees are at the elite level. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Those guys. I mean, to a certain extent, are you know they're those like kind of like you know dudes with the you know they've been through a lot. They they have to go through a lot. They don't hire well, yahoos. In this case, they, they, fa- they okay. They still failed, right? So they failed in this. Did situation. they fail? Is what I'm saying. Did they fail, <laughs> or did they fucking just say? I think so. Fuck it. I'm not calling that shit. For a nebulous reason that that either involves the elevation of the Rams or the demotion of the Saints franchise. What do you think happened? I don't fucking know. (laughs) (laughs) I think we have three chances to win after that. (laughs) But... 
Well, you know, I think the Saints... I know P.I. happened. I mean, the Saints are no angels, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. So. So the no, city... They're, they're Saints. <laughs> right. We lost, and the city was sad. And the city has been sad. Yeah, since. okay, so this well, is... we're going through many stages of grief, including... Um, of the Kubler-Ross model. A uh, car dealership guy buying billboards in Atlanta. Uh, you know... Um, Haydell's making special cookies... Um, a trial lawyer filing a big class action suit. All of the New Orleans stages of grief. Yeah, there were, we're, we're checking off all the boxes. There were two lawsuits, as a matter of fact. Oh, really? Yeah, there was one by Frank D'Amico Jr. Yeah. Um, who I think I think his was he wanted to replay the game. I yeah. think that's the one that the was end of the game. That was the really absurd one because he wanted to replay either the game or the end right. of the game. Right. And Jason Kirk, who has been really obnoxious about this, was like, "Buddy." <laughs> <laughs> You are never going to believe this footage that I'm going to show you. <laughs> I was like, damn it. <laughs> you have to be right about that. Um, and then there's a bunch of other ones. Uh, oh, Popeyes, by the way, was like online saying some shit, you know, that was like as a brand. So yeah. all of your favorite people, right? Lawyers, brands, politicians. They're all like they're like. Today, Cedric Richmond said that he's going to use his position on uh, the. Um, Whatever committee he's on to like uh-huh. hold the hearings about it. Uh, that's a relief. Like, no, really, dude. Cedric isn't like on board with Medicare for all, but he's going to do this. Exactly. That's great. Um, you know, the city council has passed a resolution or is going to pass a resolution. Uh, John Bell Edwards wrote a letter to Roger Goodell. Uh, Steve Scalise said some shit today about it. Yeah. Um, Cedric issued a statement too. Yeah. Mark Morial was in town uh, on uh, Martin Luther King Day. He said something about it. Uh, so they're all in response. They're all saying things, and like my point about this is that it's all bullshit. Like it's it's not helpful. It's wait, wasn't Steve Scalise's thing uh, that he wanted us to get awarded the next Super Bowl as recompense for it? Oh, was that even? Is that yeah, what he said? He said like the w- the way they can make this up to us is by letting us host the next Super Bowl. Oh. It's like fuck no. <laughs> Thanks a lot, buddy. I don't ever want to have it here again. Oh my god. Yeah, that sounds right. That sounds like something you would do. Yeah, That's give great. us our sweet sweet monies back. <laughs> I don't care about winning. I just want the money. So anyway, like, so you guys... P.T. Barnum that said, never let the despondence of an entire populace keep you from some of that sweet, sweet cheddar. <laughs> <laughs> so that, anyway, so that, there's like an array of, uh, like, just like grifters and assholes just yeah. like posturing on it. And they're not helping. They're not, they're not allowing, they're not allowing people to, like, like Saints fans who really care about what's going on, they're not allowing us to like process and internalize and to come to our own like conclusions and put it into context. Mm-hmm. The three of us actually spent most of the beginning of this podcast trying to put it in, into context where this is on the grief scale, like what yeah. what this really does mean. And it's just the post Super Bowl grief scale. We didn't talk about it in terms of like all of geologic Saints time, right? You know? But I think that I think that we're uh, addressing the relevant era anyway because. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there was an article. It's the only one I know for sure. <laughs> there, actually, there was an article on the Advocate on the day of the game, where, talking about the generation gap in yeah. Saints fandom, and like there were there are kids who were born like after the Saints won the Super Bowl, who now like they've grown up, and this is this era is all that they've known. And I was like reading this, and I was thinking, oh my god, these people don't even know. Like the whole point of this, the whole point of this is that you're, you, we are Charlie Brown and we're never going to win, and uh, like it's it's not about like actually it's it's about feeling the need to win, but it's also about the humor in not achieving it, and and the fact that like we like we, Chicago we, did with their double doink. <laughs> to get out right, of the shit like that. Yeah. Like that's what you know. Most of us grew up like. Watching and understanding and, and really kind of letting it be like part of our quadruple doink, really, because the dude did miss several, hit the upright several times. <laughs> That's this true. Season mm-hmm. as well. Quint- to go, quintuple oh, doink. To go out on a double doink. That was just the most bears thing to ever bears. It was incredible. And also but that was poetic, right? Oh, I mean, I loved it. <laughs> so. Uh, well, we did good. We had a good season. That has helped me cope. We had higher expectations than really 
any team should, considering that only one team wins it every year, and a lot of times it's the fucking Patriots. At my most cynical, the the phrase that has kept running through my head is, it just shows you how miraculous it is that the Shield let us win one at all. <laughs> <laughs> and I just keep saying that over and over, like it's like I'm gonna like unlock some sort of secret by thinking it, but and, it and, just that's what keeps coming to my mat to my mind is that like. Wow, you know, we we did get that one, and how how crazy is it that it actually happened? Interesting phrasing, yes. And also, you know, there's no way they were going to let a woman be president, nor a woman owner win the Super Bowl. If you want to put it into some phrasing, I the Shield you, ain't going to let you, that happen. Do you believe that? Sure, we're talking fucking. We're all talking about bullshit right now, anyways. Has conspiracy a, theories. Has a woman owner won the no. Super Bowl before? Wait, did Georgia Frontier win with the no. Rams? No. Wait, so no. maybe she was. Get right. on that, Tim and now. Now we have to go back and... Hey, do you want to be Research online it. as fuck and look that up? No. Not really. All right, I'll look it up. Because I liked old Georgia now. The, point I, the point I was trying to make about this is that I'm, I'm glad that we had that little conversation about the historical context because this generation of Saints fans who I don't know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know their way of life because like for me, like, like life, when we, when we beat the Vikings in that NFC Championship and made the Super Bowl, like every, time stopped for me there mm -hmm. and I'm still kind of like living in this like, like through the looking glass world and like, every, like I don't understand things now. Um, I... I finally understand <laughs> what what history has been about since then, and it has been about these spectacular high stakes, like seeing it slip through your grasp moments, and that is something that I can really relate to now. Like before, it was, I didn't want to be the Patriots. I never wanted to be like the oh we're the fucking best team and everybody hates us for that. Uh, Fuck who, that! That's who wants, awesome. Who wants to be that? I, yeah, I can. Wants to be Alabama. No, you don't want to be Alabama. I can finally Actually, understand you know, like that the, the Patriots have had their struggles as well. They've got some really embarrassing moments during their run. Well, they have some grievance with the with the commissioner in, in a well, way. Well, they that we also do. lost to Eli Manning twice <laughs> in the Super Bowl, and the second one, I know it's not talked about that much, but to me, I'm like, oh yeah, whatever. They're gonna let them get their game back. They're going to let them get their win, and then they fucking did it again. I was just like, come on, man. Yeah, all right. But I mean, that catch against the helmet was, like, the best thing ever. It was. That's also, Georgia Frontier did win a Super Bowl, so okay. it's not an uh, anti-feminist thing. I'm glad, I'm glad we cleared that up. Oh, Unless Gail I'm glad, pissed I'm them glad off. that Gail is a feminist. No, okay. <laughs> or a woman, you know, anti-woman thing. Like, you know, Hillary and all that shit. I was trying to build a fucking conspiracy theory there. I'm sorry it didn't work out for you. Fucking Georgia. Yes. She was also yeah. owner of the Rams, though. Maybe it was her ghost coming back, saying, fuck you, Gail. Think about that. Ghost of Georgia Frontier comes in and influences the refs. Not she wants to be the only woman owner of a football team. I'm not going to think about that too hard. Anyway. Uh, so what did y'all do afterwards? After the, I, because after the you, game, you got the fuck out of yeah, there. Yeah, because I couldn't be around <laughs> y'all's misery and my own. That would have been very sad for me. Like I can handle my own misery, and I can handle y'all's misery, but I can't handle y'all's and my misery. So <laughs> I like very like like the refs leaving the hotel room that night. I was like, all right, let me give you a couple hugs, and I'm gone. Yeah. Um we had to stay and watch Jeremy close up the gallery, which was... I thought he was going to light something on fire. Oh, man. Um, but then we left, and we went home, and I watched uh, Vanderpump Rules reruns just to watch something that made sense in my brain. Uh, this is a reality television show on um, Bravo. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It sounds like something mindless. It's very good. It's about... Reality the television show. Stupidest Bravo. Very good? Oh, it's a great show. It's a great show. The drama, the intrigue, the stupidity on display. It's all fake. It's fantastic. I know. It's like uh, football. It's You're fine with it. It's okay. great It's like wrestling. It's You're great television. Yes, it's okay. like wrestling. Right. Exactly. Right, I watch you. it like you watch wrestling. Um, 
So I did that. You dress up and go to the live events? <laughs> <laughs> I would with the other pump heads. All right, we'll see. Uh, so how else have you been coping, Allie? Uh, I couldn't really get out of bed on Monday. Um, took me till about 11.30, struggle my ass out of bed. Uh, just because I was feeling so blue. I was just so depressed and reading all the things and just really terrible, terrible stuff. And then... Um, I bought a video game, and then I spent the rest of the day playing a new video game. So mm. that, that helped a lot. And then um, I was back at work yesterday. So, um, But I bought Super Mario Odyssey for the Switch, and that's really fun. I, it's a, I sometimes get frustrated with games when they're, like, too hard right away. <laughs> then I'm like, oh, fuck this. I don't, know, like, I don't know how the controls work. I can't remember all these combos. If it's on the PlayStation, I'm like, I don't know what all... Like, these buttons don't feel comfortable in my hand. Because you have a PS3 and... a PS3 and a Switch. Oh. But I grew up playing N64. It's by far the most the system I'm most comfortable with. And so it's a Super Mario game, so a lot of the moves are the same. And the Switch, um, the play controls are the same, and the buttons are the same. So, like, I can actually play this game. And that's what, like... It's just... I know it sounds like a dumb thing, like... I'm, no, normal, there's... I'm normally bad at video games, but this one I'm not bad at, and it's awesome. It's like a lot more fun that way. Well, there's okay. always that moment when you're trying to learn the controls, you're doing a pissed a job, a bad job, you get pissed off, and then a few weeks later you stay at it, and then you do something just with the autonomy in the game that you would do with your own body in life, and you're like, fucking right. <laughs> I kicked that guy's fucking ass. Or I shot the shit out of those outlaws. Or those ogres didn't know what the fuck happened to them. Or I that's a good little that moment. Cool puzzle using yeah. without having to look it up. <laughs> that's, good. that's good. Yeah, it's fun. Um, but well, it's been sounds... it's been some dark. I mean, I feel like there's just a malaise. You know, like everyone's like not ready to talk about it yet. It's too soon. I don't. I don't think I'm ever gonna get it over. And I do feel like I'm. I'm never gonna like get over this one. I'm gonna be mad about this like forever. So. Um, just the way I'm still mad about um, the Notre Dame Florida State game where we uh, got called for <laughs> offensive pass interference on the game winning touchdown uh, on a pick play that literally every team in the NFL runs and the college football runs all the time. And it never gets called except when Notre Dame did it to beat Jameis Winston in Florida State and we lost the game. Mm-hmm. So, like, those are that and the call on Sunday are the two worst calls I've ever seen in my life. And I'll be mad about them forever. So those are just poor sports moments because of bad calls. What about other poor sports moments that made you feel kind of like this? That's not Saints related, though, because we've talked about most of them. Um, when the Red Wings lost against Pittsburgh in Game Seven, in that was in two thousand nine. Um, Anything particularly heartbreaking about that? We had won the year before, and um, it was just we could have won another cup, and it would have been great. Uh, it's just one that sticks mm. out to me. That's that, a little greedy, that tiger, isn't it? Um, I mean, I've you're seen, trying to go for your second one, and you don't. And... The Detroit Tigers losing the series in '06, uh, the World Series in '06. Um, that one would have been amazing. I mean, I've never seen them win. Um, so many Notre Dame losses; it's hard to keep track. Um, <laughs> so many. Well, okay. I mean, there's lots of like sports disappointment moments. It's funny. Like, it's... I don't think of sports disappointments in the same way because, like, I've there's things that I haven't seen. Like, I've never seen Notre Dame win a championship. I've, you know, but like, but like, I've I've had success. When were you born? Eighty five. I think they won in eighty eight or yeah. They may have won yeah, when you were. Like, I was a tiny child. It's still in your <laughs> era. Tiny baby. Count that. Yeah. She didn't see Do it. yourself a favor and I count that. I didn't see that. it. Right. <laughs> I didn't All right. see it. So, I mean, like, the okay. Saints winning the Super Bowl is the greatest sports moment of my life. Like, that, uh, like, nothing will, I, you know. Yeah. It's, that's on the, the pedestal. So what was funny to me about a lot of your moments was is that they were all in championships. And it just seems to me that. Not all of them. But, but the, yeah. they, there was, it's the expectation of the greatness that makes the downfall that much poor, which totally. is weird. Well, it just makes me think, like, why the fuck would you even try and, you know, we had three seven and nine seasons, and those fucking sucked. And there was a ton of shitty moments throughout those. 
I remember uh, Drew Brees throwing a fucking uh, pick in the Atlanta end zone one time. Yeah. Um, shitty those, fucking th- moment. Those years had a lot of inexplicable, really poorly timed Drew Brees interceptions. I remember him doing that. He did one before the half. But uh, it, it's only when it happens in the championship that we, we get so hurt by it. But at the same time... There are, you know, 28 other teams that never even, that didn't, this year didn't even get to the championship. And they had their own futility. So why should we be so, uh, that much more upset because we got there and fell a little bit short, whereas there are other teams. Because it was our year, man. Well. It was our fucking year. A lot of that's in your head, though. I can kind of answer this a little bit. Um, There's. Because every year is, it has its other narratives and context that go along with it. And, you know, as the games, as you advance, the games get bigger and the, high, and the stakes get higher. But also within the context of, say, Drew Brees' career, uh, the stakes are as high this year as you can possibly even put them. Um, I'm, I'm not even ready to think about what they do next year. I'm not really ready to, like, get my mind. I, I'm just barely getting my mind around what just happened. But... I think that after last year, after the the crazy end of the Vikings game, I think we all kind of felt like, well, they can come back and do do it one more time, and they're going to be ready. Yeah, but I don't know that we really feel like that right now. Or I don't know. I haven't really put it through my mind enough times to decide whether or not. Oh, well, they'll come back again next year. I, I kind of feel like if they can come back again next year and, and make another run at it, it will be the last one for a while, at least with Drew. And I think that I've been watching this long enough to know that, like, um, you know, they're not going to find another Drew Brees. No, he's um, the best quarterback we'll ever see in a Saints uniform. That's and for sure. and and so they could go back into the wilderness for a long time. And but the wilderness is where most of the other teams reside all the fucking time. Right. And but. So, so that, now we're just talking about being a just a standard NFL franchise. Right, it will be. It will be. Sucks and all. No, but. it doesn't suck. It, it's just, but it, these are the special moments that you would like to see them make the most of when they're when they're available. I'm gonna so make it you does, real sad though. Hmm. Ain't ever gonna be in the Atlanta fucking stadium. That is the one thing that I keep coming back mm-hmm. to. It's just so like, we just, had we had our yeah, our chance. This was our fucking year, man. To finish, to to to. Finalize the futility of the Falcons. Yeah, drive the stake into their heart once yeah. and, and let it be like we are dominant over you forever. And that makes me sad. And it would have been a lot of fun to go to go play the Patriots in in Atlanta and do that twenty eight to three business like nonstop for two weeks. I think everybody wanted to do that. And like our, we would have practiced in their facility and everything. Like we would have used their locker room. Yeah, we would have drawn pictures on their desks and shit. Yeah, and it been a lot of fun. But think um, about the things that... Their, they would have rubbed their balls all over the Falcons stuff. <laughs> Pete on the logo. Yeah. But maybe we would have gone there and we would have got a head 28... They would have got... We would have got a head 28 to 3 and they would have come back. Or they would have got a head 33 to fucking... Uh, you know, whatever. The you know, there are all take. kinds of ways that... So we're talking about this uh, horror that we feel now because it was such a grand stage. But then do you, what, do you think about what we might have avoided... By going to the even grander stage, and something else horrible happened. I think I would you have know? chosen. I would have chosen to go. Of course, because you don't. Right. It's an ambiguous, it's, abstract. It's, un, it's thing. unknown. You know, these are these are just uh, hypotheticals. Um. Well, I want to tell y'all about uh, what happened to me after I left the yes, gallery. Yes, please. Yes. So I um, just very quickly exited. Uh, like uh, like like Elvis, basically. <laughs> I just fucking left the building. As soon as I saw it, I just left the fucking building. And, and, and I explained that earlier why. So uh, Tisha and I get in the car, and we're trying to avoid Superdome traffic. So instead of going out Esplanade, we went down to Cater, and we're trying to catch the uh, expressway right there. Um, oh, yeah, because uh, you got to cross the bridge. Yeah. Yeah. So we're shooting by there, and we're trying to get past the fans who are leaving the dome too. Well, we don't quite. Um, so as we're coming by, you know, the epicenter of, you know, Saints Dome, Lucy's and shit, they're just pouring down Poydras and coming down there in all states of like a, 
like they've witnessed, uh, you know, war crimes or something, you know, <laughs> and also all very drunk, right? Of course. Um, and it, we get stuck in some traffic there, and she's kind of mad at me for telling her to go that way. But I was like, I, th- I think it'd be easier than trying to hit that 90 split by the dome, which is fucked up on just your general 2 o'clock afternoon. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, this traffic's bad. As an avid watcher of traffic. You know. I do. I watch traffic in my spare time. My cat like watches birds. Um, oh, I see. We got a, you know, a little jam. We got some green going on over here. Ah, interesting. Oh, man. It's purple right there. Anyway, Classic so we're. Classic red checkered slipknot. Oh, uh, what is it? I bet you it's an accident. Oh, no. It looks like there's some road construction. Road blocked because of a carnival. What, what? is this? Oh, float transportation. <laughs> Anyway, so we're going by Lucy, and by the time we get around um, Julia Street, I have to pee, she has to pee, so I'm like, turn down this road, and we'll go by this bar, and we'll both go pee. So we pull in by the Howlin' Wolf, she goes in, and I have to pee so bad that I just grab a water bottle and bump into the back seat, and without spilling a drop, do it trucker style into the bottle, right? Mm-hmm. But I just that's just to relieve the pressure. So <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I had to pee real bad. So I put she, on this episode. she gets in the uh, car, and I go back and I pee in the Howlin' Wolf uh, bathroom. Well, by the time I come out, apart for y'all. Um, you filled up a bottle and then you went to go pee. I didn't fill it up. I relieved the pressure. I don't know how big my bladder is compared to the bottle. But he did a partial pee. Is yeah, what I had to stop it. I had to That's, stop it. How do you? All right. Well, because I was full of fucking adrenaline from the game, bro, and I knew I had to do. Just like fucking this Tommy a, Lee Lewis out there. I'm just I saying. Had to perform. This is an. I did it. This is an athletic move that you oh pulled. My God. Well, it's probably because I've been training for the Crescent City Classic. Okay. So I get out and I go and I pee and when I come back out, there is a dude who has another dude in a fucking UFC style chokehold, like leaning up against the car and they're fighting. And I go, whoa, and I look, and then behind the car, there's three people rolling around on the ground out there. So I'm, like, walking into a multi-person fight happening. (laughs) And I'm like, okay. So you walk out of the set of Roadhouse by any chance? Uh, It seemed like (laughs) it, yeah. So I go up to the dude who's got the dude in the chokehold because the guy he's got in the chokehold is... You know, his eyeballs are bulging out and he's looking all fucked up and blood's coming out of his mouth. And I say, hey, dude, stop, stop. You've got him. He's done. Let him go. You fucking kicked his ass. Just please let him go. So he does. And then I look over to where the three people were wrestling on the ground and there's only one guy there now and he's getting up and the other two have absconded, right? So... Those two dudes get up, and they're both big as fuck, right? You know, two tightest shirts and muscled and stuff. And the other little guy who gets up, the guy who was in the hold, he gets up, and he's about my size but thinner. So he's a little guy. And I said, uh, you know, you need to fucking Run. get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> you need to leave right now. You got your ass kicked. It's done. It's over. Look at this guy. Leave and he's like, Man, that was my fucking cousin, though, bruh. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck happened or why, but and then the other dude's now starting to menace us. And I was like, Don't, 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 don't. His ass is kicked. You're good, bruh. You need to leave. So that guy left, and then I went over to the other guy and I was like, Yeah, you know, you sure kicked the fuck out of that guy, man. Wow. Um. So then I look down the street and the little guy is talking with two people down the street who are bigger than him, but there are two women. So his cousin was women. And they had gotten in a fight with, uh, Tisha would tell me later, there was another woman involved who got her clothes ripped off. This is a big fight. And ran off. Yeah, this is a big fight. I just like that you you have shown up and are immediately solving problems. Well, you didn't even ask to be there. You're a you just like walked in and you're like, then just, I'm a reverend. Right. It's what I it, it had happened. I'd done almost the same thing like a month ago. I never mentioned it. But <laughs> I'd broken up a fight on Royal Street. 
Did you know? That's what I do. I try and break up the fight. You could be a referee. Do you? Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I hear. Do you look good in vertical strikes? I hear there's some openings. I don't want. Maybe. Uh, I don't need the pressure. Besides, <laughs> it doesn't end well for me. Anyway, okay. The story's not over. All right. Oh, great. So. Um, they're down there talking and I see him going over there and um, a woman who is obviously the instigator of the whole thing um, starts running towards us, right? Full <laughs> speed. So I... Like Nickel, s- Nickel, Nickel Ruby. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, nickel, nickel Face. Nickel Face. I'm Tommy Lee Lewis in this whole fucking okay. thing, okay? <laughs> so I see her running and I know that these two do... First of all, this guy's buddy... Was one of the was the guy that was back behind the car, and okay. the two people were these two women that were that are okay. further down the street. Sure, now. sure, sure. So he got attacked by these two girls, and they were working him over. <laughs> so that just like so, if you want to know the uh, the hit points of these girls, they're pretty fucking high. Mm-hmm. So one of them starts running towards me, and I see her running, and I just kind of like spread my legs and my arms out. As far as I can uh-huh. to like, uh, like don't draw the foul, draw don't the do this. Like, yeah. no, just say don't fight anymore. This is fucking stupid. Or at least I'm gonna stop her. She's gonna see me and she's gonna stop. Or okay. I'm gonna be able to slow her down enough for the two dudes who she's going to attack to react in some way, so they know she's coming. Okay. Well, she <clears throat> just runs right up and punches me right in the face. What? Yeah, punches me right between the eyes. Holy shit, dude. I get this whole, I don't know if either of y'all have ever been punched in the face. I have. It's not my first time. You get that whole feeling where your eyes light up and your nose gets all fucked up. Oh, my God. Snot starts running down and your whole face gets all numb and shit. I'm just like, yeah. (laughs) And I was like. I just got punched in the fucking face. Yeah. Now, the Saints have lost about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay? And now, no, okay, no, it goes like this. Right. I woke up in Austin. <laughs> I flew to fucking Nashville. <laughs> I party at the gallery in New Orleans. The Saints lose. I get punched in the face <laughs> by a lady. This is the no, fifth. The Saints lose. You pee in a bottle. You pee in a bathroom. <laughs> And then you get punched in the face. Then I get punched in the face, right? (laughs) So at this point, I'm like, fucking Boutros, Boutros, golly, man. I'm like, the UN is, the peacekeepers are pulling out. (laughs) And whatever's going to happen in Mogadishu is just going to fucking happen. Right? So I'm like... I get in the car, and I'm like, this let's... This for all those Boutros, Boutros, Galley heads out there. <laughs> or Kofi Adnan. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, Whichever. I'm sorry to interject. I'm sorry. You get in the car. You, you got punched in the face when you get in the car. What happens with, like... So... Like, like, like how do you transition? I'm glad... Wait, you and A, when I get in the car, I tell Tisha, I just got punched in the fucking <laughs> face. <laughs> And then she's like, let's fucking, let's bounce. And I'm like, yeah, let's bounce. So as we're pulling off, I look over to where the two dudes were standing. And it looks like there is a WWF style fucking melee. There's bodies flying everywhere. It's getting worse. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, and Tisha, I did not witness this. I saw a chair flying. But Tisha said later that she saw a person with a chair doing like up and down motions on somebody. Oh and that, that that happens as I'm like, I look and see that through the car window as I'm just holding my nose looking at it and going, Jesus Christ. It's just bodies everywhere. I want to say... It really was like Roadhouse. It, it was. was. Like, cause Holy when, shit. When, when it kicked off, like two dudes ran out of the bar and ran in there and jumped in on it. So there was just bodies in there. Oh my Elliot's god. Got a knife he's out here. Yeah, yeah. fucking uh, yeah. So then we went to the Crown and Anchor and met some friends and I had to I was like you get some get a little tissue or something. I was like, "Oh, put to the face, bro." <laughs> <laughs> and then Metaphorically was, and then for real. Like my buddy was like, "At least she didn't drop you." I was like, "No, she didn't drop me, man." So yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, I'm sorry. Last been here. Like you've been here. It's almost nine o'clock. You've been here for almost three hours. 
And this goes into your save it for the podcast. Yeah, I didn't even... This is the first time you said anything about getting punched in the face. I didn't even talk about it on Twitter because I wanted to... Because I'm dedicated... This is the best save it for the cast. To the hunker down cast. Everyone's going to listen to this one. I barely mentioned it to Jeremy. I was just like, hey, I I saw him today. I was like, you know, I got punched in the face after the... By a woman. Well, yeah, I got punched in the dick by a ref. Lance... I'm like, no, I got punched in the dick by a ref. And then I got punched in the face. That, uh, that puts a lot of things in perspective, yeah. I would say. Yeah, I mean, I woke up yeah. the next morning being like, yeah, the Saints won, lost last night, and I got punched in the face. Yeah. Did, I mean, you don't have any bruises or anything. Nope. She didn't have a whole lot of power behind it. She didn't it. break your nose. I took it. I just took it and just was like, we're bailing. <laughs> Call the helicopters, <laughs> like the refs. It's, it's a, leaving the hotel. Right, right. So it's, it's fucking follow Saigon all over again. I, yeah, like I, like, I left the gallery, being, being that fight, and the refs it. left the hotel all that night in a, <laughs> in a precision, in a precision manner with, right. with preciseness. So that happened to me. Afterwards. That's 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 amazing. Yeah. <sighs> Man, so uh, well, that's that's how you coped, I guess. It's the like uh, I think it's like the fifth time I've been punched in the face. You I never mean, forget it. <laughs> it always feels the same. The first time it was uh, by Marshawn Lynch, and then the <laughs> next time it was by Vernon Davis, <laughs> kind of, and yeah. then then it was by Stefan Diggs, and now it's by this lady. Yeah. So yeah, good. Tisha did say that those two girls had fought another girl, and that they had ripped her clothes off, <sighs> and that she had run off. Uh, and then all Tisha saw when she looked out the window was a lady who had obviously just got her ass kicked running down the street with ripped up clothes and shit. So she uh, had a bad night, too. Which one of you was driving? Uh, Tisha was. Okay. I was like, you have to drive. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm not fit in any way right. to do it, emotionally or <sighs> chemically. So... Uh, how we wrap this up? I was. Uh, what did you do? After, how did you recover? Have from you been the game? coping? Well, you know, it was did you a. Go to Molly's with all them. After the no, game? we got out of there and then went home, and then the next day was very like it was very Ash Wednesday. It was like I uh, I got up and I ran like another like four or five miles, and then. So went, you got up and punished yourself. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just you know, it's like you get up and I clean the house. I went and got a haircut. Like, I got all the things that you do to, like, just get the Mardi Gras out of you yeah. the next day. <laughs> like, that's that's what I did. I, I, I just, I cleansed, you know. Okay. Um, and then, like, that day, actually, I walked into Rouse's, and they have the, all, the, all the king cakes out on display. And, like, really, my, my mind went, wait, isn't that, isn't that over? Like, did we just finish this? <laughs> and that was a weird-ass day, though. Oh, I bet you they're, like, $4 now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, people were like walking around like with their Saints gear still on and stuff and like just kind of walking into walls and things and I, I don't yeah. know. Uh, oh man. Uh, I, I think though like this little conversation we just had uh, punching in the face notwithstanding like I think is really kind of helping me start to put it back together. Like I think that now not only do I kind of understand what the kids today know about football and like what the grievances are supposed to be it all plugs right back into like my whole like like it's it's absurd in the first place and like it's not really about like it's not about winning it's about sticking it to the falcons right it's about it's about it's not about winning it's about grievance like it's about like you know like fuck them but like because because nobody really wins a football game really like some like even if you like win by accident you're you're punched in the face at the end of the day anyway. Like yeah, something. What's the point of winning if you can't like fuck up your enemies along the way? Exactly. Yeah. We had the perfect so, opportunity to. It's, it's it's kind of about the things that the joys we're not going to get. It's not like any yes. joy was taken away from me, or you know that's just how I look at it. It's like I'm still me, and we're all still friends, and everything's going to go on the way it is. But we're just denied these really ecstatic moments that were probably going to come. Even if we lost, ended up losing, um, we were going to have a fun two weeks just getting hyped about it. Yep. And now we're just going to have a mundane couple weeks. 
Saints. And then we got to do. Getting ready for Mardi Gras. Right, then we got to do Mardi Gras. Ready for Mardi Gras. Yeah. But I always hate it when the Saints lose and someone's like, hey, they can't take Mardi Gras from us. <laughs> I'm always, that's why I said, told you to go fuck yourself on Twitter. Yeah, but I mean. I was the, just like, I, I hear they come. It's literally the next thing that happens. And so, like, oh, yeah. It could have happened. Tomorrow happened is another the, day. The 7 and 9 seasons, it happened too. You know? It's it, still Mardi, Mardi Gras is always going to be there unless it there's did, a but like war. so, like we have all these people trying to jump off a cliff, or a and really, strike. we didn't even get into this tonight. Like, and so I'll have to just talk about this to y'all later. But like, the the fucking way people have reacted is, I just it's 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 not. I know that you need a couple of days to process, and maybe we're starting to process and shit. But like the fucking hashtag resistance Twitter reactions have like. I, I can't get with that shit. Like it's been like people are like, we're gonna have them come in and re re replay the game. We're gonna have a parade during the Super Bowl. We're not. We're gonna have. We're gonna. We're gonna sue them. And Robert Mueller is gonna come in and impeach <laughs> Goodell. And Ooh, we're, it's like I can't. I didn't hear that one. But that's what they sound like. Like it's like it, just accept the things that happen to you and like carry it to the next thing. Like I know it sucks and we lived through it and it sucked. And then next year we'll have this to like go to throw in somebody's face. Like this happened to us, asshole. So fuck you. I mean that's what that's what Ali just said. Football is like, right? That's that's what we're gonna bring next time. Okay. So it's, it's like fine. Mickey said, life is unfair sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for Mickey to say. I mean, football wouldn't be as fun for me if every single time a team scored on a pick play, on a legal pick play, I didn't get to yell. Oh, look, it's the play that every team gets to run except Notre Dame. Right. Like, that's part of what's fun for me now. That's right. Which just means I'm getting really old and turning into you. Which well, is also everybody does eventually. It is um, terrible to be Jeff. <laughs> uh, and I think on that note, we really should wrap this up. I think that's the thing that we've discussed. Wait, we have some jive wires. Let me, let me, let me load them up here real quick. Y'all, can, y'all add to a couple okay. things. So what I, was it you were going to say? I, load this up. I can't remember. Oh, okay. I was also really looking forward to. I'm going to uh, New England this weekend, and I was I'm leaving tomorrow morning. And I was really looking forward to like uh, taunting a bunch of Pats fans, but now I can't do that. So mm. I'm really bummed about that. Yeah, that's a, that's the the miss joy. The miss joy speaks of, to the miss of shit talk. Joy now you can just punch them. <laughs> yeah, but they they are you know. A, a, a fan base that's always done well and will continue to do well, but you see, yet seems still perpetually miserable. Hmm. You know about any anything that they you know they've got this such level of confidence that any futility that they face is you know completely fucking horrible and shit. And it's just like, hey, give your fucking self like. Atlanta's never won a Super Bowl. The Vikings have been around forever, and they've never fucking won a Super Bowl, you know? It's Man, like, that's great. <laughs> the, Fuck them. The, the Bills. Um, the Panthers. That's right. The Panthers, their quarterback situation is all fucked up right now. Teams that aren't us. Think about them. No, you're right. You know, we, we, we've won one. So, like, again, the other thing, that's the other thing about this that makes it more comical for me. And really, like, the fact that they won the Super Bowl before all of these staggering high-stakes losses happened, like, I think it makes it it makes it makes easier to take, really, when Absolutely. you think about it. Absolutely. Just think. Favre doesn't throw inexplicably, well, not inexplicably for Favre, but inexplicably <laughs> in general, throws against his body when he could run for 10 to 15 yards and get in field goal range and they hit a far less than 58-yard field goal, and all of this becomes so much more desperate Yep. and so much more pathetic. Yep. And we... I might be dead. <laughs> I mean, some of this might have killed me by now. I, I you know... And, and, and we wouldn't have my favorite Saints radio call of all time, which is not the picks <laughs> have flown, but right what came right before it, which is Jim Henderson going, It's good! It's good! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he just let him, his like, emotion come him, in. Him like laughing, crying through that is like the greatest thing ever. Then he got back to his script. You know, he had the pigs are, have flown in the script. Yeah. But then he got off the script because he let himself get caught up in the emotion. 
hell is frozen over. Like Walter Cronkite and John F. Kennedy, man, when those guys... But it's that, like, laughing, crying voice break when he realizes that it's actually happening. It's mm. just so beautiful. It's my, it's one of my favorite sports radio calls of all time. It's pretty good. I, I, I was watching that a few times getting ready for that. I did so many things to prepare for this game. <sighs> I mean, I don't know if it's as good as There is a God after all. I think that one is like yeah. <laughs> the Ur Saints call. I was ready for it. I was ready to go. Did we you didn't pour go. resin epoxy over a chicken thigh from Popeye's <laughs> that has magical powers to not only to dually tune in the radio signals, but also affect <laughs> athletic performance three miles away? The I'm chicken a, had like a thirty-six and zero point spread for a while. I guess <laughs> incredible. I guess really, I'm more disappointed in the chicken than anything else. Yeah, like we really believed in that chicken. We really did. And the chicken fucking let us down. And that's and again. Then and then the next day, Popeyes is tweeting some snarky shit about the refs. I'm like, fuck you, Popeyes. You lost the goddamn job. Did you? Right. <laughs> Maybe we just loved the chicken too much. Maybe. You know, we, we took away its wildness. We tried to tame it and constrain it. And, and, uh, and wanted to just be just out there. wanted to be free on we, the, on the ladder. A free-range chicken instead, yeah. We nailed it to a tree. The epoxied its spirit. Yeah. You know, it's really our fault. What you got there? You got this... Uh... This is a special All Saints Rams edition of the Jive Wire, and it's brought to you at the Oddest Hours. Um, also, I want to take a moment to thank all our patrons. Uh, if we were more prepared, we would call you out by name and uh, ask you if y'all want to donate to our Patreon. Patreon. I mean, I mean, if you want more great episodes like this... <laughs> Um, then go to Patreon slash Hunger Downcast and, you know, give some. Um, Gail Benson's Don't Give a Damn Singers are at the, well, he wrote Goldmine, but I'm going to change it to Black and Goldmine. Because, oh, Tim and them, y'all have to give us a fake bar and a fake, a fake venue and a fake uh, act. Uh, the Black and Gold Flag at the Saints. I'm going to add an S to the Saints. Pretty sure he meant that as a double entendre. Okay. Not in a nice sexual double way. Double entendre there. Not, not, not in a sexual way. Uh, Tim Ruppert gave that other one. Uh, the relaxation sensation playing at the Walk Ons in Atlanta. Roger and his blind mice play the first club out of town at sunset. Thanks, Alfredo. You got it right. <laughs> the Pro Bowl Plur Party with glowing blindfolds at uh, Gasa Gasa Gasa. Gonna add next have to put a gossip to, <laughs> to make it a fake place. Goodell's deafening silence play the grudge bar. Oh, thank you, Lip Rap. Uh, good Goodell's deafening silence play the grudge bar every night at eight for the foreseeable future. Thank you, Venmo. Uh, the Ram fan is performing solo at the West Burbank Cul de Sac Community Center at nine. The Venovich Vipers are at the No Call Saloon at nine. Not the Saints are playing the Atlanta Falcons locker room at 10. And they raging, were just in town. <laughs> raging Sean is playing uh, at the Sideline Lounge at 11. Get your gig into the job while, you know, send us an email. <laughs> DM us on Twitter. Holler at us on the street. Actually, don't do that. No, don't do that, please. <laughs> I guess I that's all, huh? Yeah, uh, I think... Wow. I think yeah. I think here we are again. It's been real. <sighs> uh, we gonna chop chop. That shit was good though. That song was good. Chop them. Oh the chop yeah. Song. So I had I had a, in my Twitter drafts like all week variation. I couldn't come up with the right one, but you know that. Uh, so there was a bank or a video that Liberty Bank did where all their employees dancing to Chapa style and their oh my god and stuff. And I had a link with that video, and the tweet said. Um, White New Orleanians whispering to each other, that's choppy. <laughs> <laughs> but I just couldn't pull the trigger on it. Because <laughs> I was like, does everybody know that that's choppy joke or not? You know, like, yeah. <sighs> anyway, I ended up not doing it, but I just wanted to share that with you right now. Well, thank you for that, Alan. That's, We're missing out on choppy. two weeks of uh, choppy. Choppy style, too. Yeah, I guess that's another one to throw in the pile. Thank you, Chapo. It was nice seeing you again We're after all those years. We're never going to get a chance to win in the Atlanta Stadium again, though. Hmm. 
That, oh. that is a right in that dream off. And I'm sure those fans, we're making some Atlanta fans happy because of that. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, next time we're in a Super, we'll be in a Super Bowl again someday. We should just go watch it in Atlanta just to, because fuck them. Hey, I like your fucking style. Let's do it. It's a date. All right, cool. All right. Uh, I don't know. I have anything to add to this. I'm going to go back and uh, I think we're going to like, watch the highlights a couple more times and like drink myself to sleep or well, something. Just, just remember, it's one of God's tender mercies that the Rams don't have fans. Yep. So it's not like we got to fucking listen to them. Yep. Um, yeah, and and a lot of uh, the national media came out that came out after the game was like, wow, yeah, Saints – Y'all can be mad about this forever. And it's like, thank you. I am going to be mad about it forever. That's good. So there you go. So don't don't feel too bad. Don't like, you know. I'm not crazy. I'm going to be mad about this forever. And that's okay. Yeah. That's right. And, and carry carry forward. And, carry and, a grudge. And, and it'll be, yeah. Always carry sports grudges. And it's, <laughs> and it's a righteous thing to be mad at because the Lynch run or the Davis or the Diggs, they were all athletic feats that that our guys fucking not our guys like our teammates but our guys the players and everybody loves the players you know a few notwithstanding but this one is the fucking refs so everybody hates those motherfucking guys and it's a legit placement of anger okay although Lynch didn't have to grab his dick when he fucking jumped (laughs) in that like that was trash just you know hold your grudges locate your anger correctly and uh, we'll all, you know, we'll all get through this. I'm not even mad at the girl who punched me in the face. <laughs> like when she did it, I was just like, eh, "Looks like I'm my services are no longer needed here. Let me just roll on out." And you carry that great energy into Carnival. Right. We'll see y'all with our Mardi Gras recap in like a month. <laughs> the epic Mardi Gras recap. All right, guys. I think that's good to do. Uh, thanks again. Uh, we'll catch you next time.